In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Seated. When I looked at the readings for this week, I thought maybe we should a couple of weeks ago for Super Bowl Sunday because we have that passage, John 3.16, the one we always see being held up on signs at football games and sporting events. But what does John 3.16 really mean? What does it mean when we quote it? And I think for many people, it becomes a very divisive thing. It's almost like we want to say we're better than you because we understand this. And I think one of the challenges that we have with this passage is that we can either use it to build up or we can use it to tear apart the world. Our readings today, we get insight to two people, Nicodemus and Abram. And Nicodemus is a most interesting character. He was a Pharisee, a learned man, a leader in the Jewish community. But yet there was something about Jesus that kept drawing him to Jesus and drew him in a way that he wanted to learn more. But then we read, Nicodemus went to see Jesus in the middle of the night. Why? Why? And as I pondered that question, I thought, wow, that's pretty much Episcopalian. We don't want people to always know about our faith, about our religion. We like the Episcopalian word, but we avoid that word evangelization. Those two E words, one of them we really avoid. And I think in a sense, that is what Nicodemus is doing. He wants to learn more, he wants to grow, but he doesn't want anybody else to know about what he's up to. I know in my own journey, my own life, it took me a long time when people would ask me, what do I do? And for the longest time, I always said I was a perfusionist first, and then the priest thing might have come out later. And it's taken me a while to get comfortable to say when somebody says, so what do you do? I say, I'm a priest now. And I think part of that is the fact that I've had the opportunity to be a full-time priest, but it's also becoming more comfortable in my priesthood. And I think that's what we're all called to do on our journeys as we grow and to learn more, is to become more comfortable in our skins as Christian. And then we have that reading from Genesis about Abram. And God speaks to Abram and tells him to go. And what Abram does, I think, is the biggest movement, the biggest walk in trust that we see. Eric Steele, the rector of St. John's in Gig Harbor, I heard him preach the other night at a celebration of new ministry over at Trinity uh, in Seattle. And Eric told this story about when he was in Morocco. And he was going out, he said in his morning prayer, his prayer that morning was, Jesus, I want to see you. And he said he was going out for his walk and he was down in the market and he saw this, this man that was working with leather and stuff and he said his wallet needed some repair. And so he asked the man if he could fix it. And the man who didn't speak much English at all said, yeah, and took it from him. And Eric says, my first question was, how much? He said, the guy sat there looking at it, he goes, how much, how much? And he just kept working. And he starts sewing on it, and Eric's asking him again, he says, how much? And he says, this little man goes, how much, how much? Just kept repeating it back to him. And as he keeps working on it, Eric asked him a third time, how much? And the guy once again just repeated what he said, echoed him, and said, how much, how much? And he got done, and he handed Eric his little wallet, billfold, whatever it was. And Eric thought, okay, here it comes, because he had read how, and I heard this too about the Middle East, that you take a picture of somebody's donkey or their camel, they're going to ask you to pay them for taking this picture. And Eric's going, you know, I'm going to be robbed here. This guy's going to charge me a fortune, and then it's going to be a big scene. And I hands it to him, and the guy says, Eric says again, how much? And the guy says, nothing, and smiled. 
And Eric says at that moment, he realized that he saw Jesus. And he said what he also realized, just as Abram did in this story this morning, is that he needs to learn to grow in trust, in trust of God and in trust of our fellow human beings. And in telling that story, he said, caution and shrewdness and self-sufficiency will only take us so far. To be witnesses for Christ in this world requires us to be in this world as Christ made himself in this world, vulnerable, in need of support, willing to be misunderstood and taken advantage of, and to do so with a spirit of absolute love and oneness with all those whom we are sharing this life. And as I prayed about these readings, as I thought about Eric's words from Tuesday night, I thought about our journey here at St. Anthony's, our journey of this transition, our journey about things that are going to be new very, very soon. And what it's calling, I think, me to as I decide where I'm going to go next, and I think what it's calling all of us to is to grow in our trust of God, to grow in our trust of, of being led by the Spirit just as Jesus was in the desert. This is a journey of trust. It's a journey of faith. And what holds next is unbeknown, as unbeknownst to any of us right now. We really don't know where the Spirit is going to lead us or how the Spirit will lead us and how St. Anthony's will look in the near future or in the far future. But we know that things will be different. We know that things will change. And our question, our challenge, is how open will we be to that change? It's obvious that none of us, none of us as human beings, none of us as a congregation anywhere on this planet have it all together. In fact, maybe it's better that we don't. I think it's safe to simply say, Jesus, we really don't know who we are yet or where we're going. We cannot possibly foretell where you're going to take us. We can't dictate how we're going to respond to our fears. But here we are. We place our trust. In. So my friends, as we continue on this Lenten journey, as we continue with the knowledge of knowing how this story is going to end, as we continue on this journey, let us let us grow. Let us grow in our trust of God. Let us grow in our trust of the Spirit who leads us. Let us grow in those words that we hear so often, be not afraid. And let us allow to use that passage from John to unite, to bring together, and help us to grow in our love not only of God, but in our love of each other that we travel on this planet with. Amen. Amen.